Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro, and today we're gonna be turning this into this. I'm going to do is rather than selecting one of these I'm actually going to just import my footage as a project. Once I have located my footage I'll just push import as project. So the very first step is actually track this scene and I'm actually going to call this just original. So go up to behaviors motion tracking analyze motion and that'll give us this little red tracking marker here. Let's drag that over to a place of high contrast. So luckily this scene has a lot of that and I'm going to place this right here on the rocks and then let's jump over to the inspector and we're going to click this add button and that will give us an additional tracker. Take this tracker and let's find a point that doesn't get obscured by any foreground objects. So if I play through you can see how a point on that center island doesn't actually get obscured. So we'll we'll just find a nice little spot for that with another high contrast point. Let's drag up the look ahead frames. Next, we are just going to push the analyze button and let motion do its thing. Okay, so we are all tracked and it looks like it did a pretty darn good job. Let's go ahead, we'll just call this the camera motion. After that, let's go ahead and bring in the brand new sky we want. So we can push command I or go up to file import and you're just gonna wanna locate a really high quality sky. So I've got one here that I got from unsplash.com. We will import that and it's great because it has that horizon line. So let's go ahead, drag this up, and we want it to match the horizon line of the other shot. And we can actually have it overlap just a little bit, and you'll see why. And then let's go ahead and scale this up to 66% is a good number. From there, let's go ahead, let's jump up to behaviors, motion tracking, match, move. And we will just drag the camera motion into this well here. And then we are going to want it to work on the position and the rotation. From there, select the sky. And I'm actually going to disable it. Come down here to this arrow and we're going to select the anchor point. And the anchor point we can just drag and we want it to be in the exact same spot that we originally tracked the footage. So we'll just drag it there. If I don't do this, the sky is going to be all over the place. So we've got the anchor point and I believe that lines up pretty well. Let me unlock it so we can see. Yep. So those line up almost perfectly. There we go. And just the closer you can get, the better this will work. So now if I enable this, we can actually play back and see how the sky is just stuck perfectly to this shot. One last thing I would like to do is actually change the transform type to mimic source. And that will allow us to actually shift around our photo element if we need to down the line. Okay, so we have the sky here. We are going to actually add a mask so we can kind of feather the, the bottom edge of this to make it a little bit more realistic. So go ahead and select your sky. Come down here to the rectangle mask tool. And we're just going to drag a large box and allow some of that edge to still be in frame. Actually, I'll give it even a bit more than that. So we've got our mask here. And then we're going to jump over to the mask settings here and we are going to drag this feather up. We really want it to feather nicely, but we don't want to see that sharp edge. So there we go. And then we can actually take the sky and bring it down just a little bit more. After that, let's go ahead and collapse that. We're going to duplicate our original footage so we can push command D or you can right click and duplicate. We will delete the camera motion and we're going to drag that above our sky. Let's go ahead and call this the foreground element. And now jump up to your filters. Let's go down to keying and we're going to use a luma key. And this is going to work really well because our sky is almost totally white because it was an overcast day. First, go ahead and push this invert box and we wanna make sure that it's actually keying out the sky and not the rocks. Then change your view type to the map view so we can see black and white and anything that is white will remain in the scene. Anything that is black will be deleted. And let's just go ahead and drag these around so that we have no sky in frame. And it's actually okay that it's taking out a bit of the ocean. You'll see why in a little bit. 
But if we can get a little bit more of that beach back, that would be optimal. So we'll just drag that up there. Perfect. And then we can go ahead and switch this back to the original view type. So you can see that the sky is behind the rocks, but it doesn't look super realistic. So we'll do a few things to fix that in just a bit. Let's go ahead and duplicate this sky, Command D, and we're gonna call this the sky reflection. And let's drag this under the original sky. From there, let's jump into the properties. We are on the Y axis going to set the scale to be negative 66. So now the sky has actually got a reflection if I can disable this you can see how the sky is reflecting here and it almost has that water type. And we can drag this down just a little bit. Now, let's go ahead and jump back into our foreground and let's make sure that the anchor point on this is set in the proper spot. There we go, we've got our anchor point all set. And so now we've got a little bit of a reflection happening in our scene. So it's a little bit intense, but we are going to fix that. So the first thing to fix this is we're going to want to change the blend mode of the sky. It's a little bit too intense for this uh, to look real. So let's go ahead and select your sky, jump to the properties panel, and we'll set the blend mode type to something like overlay. And I find that overlay tends to be fairly realistic. And you can actually change the blend mode type. So if you want something that's a little bit more vivid, you could jump to hard light or vivid light and get a little bit more intense with your sky. So it's totally up to you um, how intense you wanna get. And if we change this to light wrap, that's also got like a real vivid look to it. And you might even do that and then like drag down the opacity or something like that. That is a good place. And we'll, let's go ahead and leave it there. That's got a nice dreamy look. And we can do the same with the sky reflection, change that to light wrap. And then let's go ahead and take the opacity way down. Perfect. So the next thing that we are going to do is we want the color of the sky to almost be wrapping around our islands. And what's awesome is motion actually comes in with a light wrap feature. So go ahead, select your Luma here. And if we jump down here, we can see the light wrap tool. If we just drag that up, you will see that it almost allows the sky to wrap around the edges just like that. Now this is probably a little bit too intense, so let's go ahead and bring it down to like 20 maybe. And you want it a, kind of subtle, but it's going to help really blend your scene together if you get it just right. Okay, so one downside of the light wrap feature is that it takes out a little bit of this outer edge. So what you will need to do in Final Cut is, or you could do it here too. You could scale this up by like 102 pixels. And so now it's it zoomed past that bad edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump back into our Luma key and we wanna get this looking as realistic as we can. Now you will notice down here that the sky is actually coming through the sand. So we are going to make an alpha mat to fix that. So let's go ahead and duplicate our original footage one more time. We'll duplicate that, drag it to the very top, delete the camera motion, and let's rename this to be alpha mat. And then we are going to come down here and we're gonna create a shape that somewhat cuts out this edge. So we're just gonna kinda go around the shape of the beach. Perfect, and we've got this alpha mat edge. And let's go ahead and get rid of the outline so it's exactly where I have the points. And then go ahead and add in a little bit of a feather just so that we've got a soft edge on it. From there, let's go ahead and rename this to be the, we'll call it the mat. Select our alpha mat layer, right click and go down to add image mask. And we're just gonna drag this mat into the well there. So you'll see it's already having an effect on this edge and we'll dial it in a little bit better. But the problem is, is when the scene moves, that mat is not going to move. So it's actually going to take out some of our ocean, which on this scene, it's not that bad, but um, for others it could be. So let's go ahead, go up to behaviors on the mat, behaviors, motion tracking, match move. And we're going to add in this camera motion to 
the movement of this mat. And now this mat is actually following the motion of our scene, which is a really, really handy way to just mask out something very quickly. And now that we've got that dialed in, let's go ahead, double click it, and we can edit some of this edge. So we want it to come up as close to the ocean as we can, just like a so and we can disable it so we no longer see it. And now we shouldn't have that problem of the sky coming through on the sand. Something I'm noticing is that the water here is just not rough enough. So let's go and go into our sky reflection and we can bring down the opacity even more. I might change this actually back over to overlay so that we can keep some of the detail in the water there. There we go. Perfect. It's looking much better. And it's those reflections that are really going to sell this scene. The reflections and the coloring. And that is what we are going to get into next. Okay, so for the coloring, we're going to first start with our foreground element. Let's go ahead and disable the alpha mat because otherwise we won't see the color happening in here. Jump up to our filters, go down to color. And you can do whatever you prefer as far as color goes, but I really like working with the color wheels. So let's go ahead and dive in there. And we really want this to take on this pink hue look. And you'll notice there's blue in the shadows and then there's this orange in the midtones, and then it kind of gets to white in the highlights. So let's go ahead and try and mimic that as best we can. So if we take our shadows, we can push those down into the blue teal area maybe more blue there there we go that seems to be matching pretty well and i might make it just a tad darker there and then in our mid mid tones let's go ahead and push those towards the orange or the pink actually that seems to be working pretty well and our highlights let's go ahead and push those towards the pink as well because nothing on the beach is quite blown out except for the the water here which seems to be working okay and i am i am not a genius when it comes to coloring so i'm sorry if there's a professional colorist out there that's shaking his head at what i'm doing but um hopefully this gets the the general look across and we can change the temperature here a bit too okay so here's without here's with it's looking quite a bit closer to that sky and let's go ahead, copy this color wheels over to our alpha mat, and then we can re-enable that. Okay, so we're getting a pretty good looking shot here. I will say that some of these edges on the Luma key are still a little bit too sharp here. So I that might be something I wanna dial in a little bit more, jump into the Luma roll off, shrink it a little bit more maybe, maybe soften it after I've shrunk it. But you don't wanna go too far because if you do, you're gonna see a lot of these white edges. So you just gotta be careful with how far you go. There we go, maybe we're getting something there. Something right in there. Okay, so now we've got this really dreamy looking shot. So for comparison, let me duplicate this one more time, drag it to the top. So this was the before, this is after. It looks so much dreamier. It looks like we're on a tropical island or something. And, uh, and I think it should work really well at tricking your friends and family that you went to an incredible location. So we are at the part of the tutorial where I ask you to give me your subscription and your like. But you already know that, so you can do that if you want to. I do really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you next week.